Hello friends, I'm Meghna Thomas and welcome back to our channel Golden Airplets Aviation Pilot Training Academy, your route to the cockpit. If you are someone who's pursuing your flying right now or if you are someone who aspires to go do your flying, my video today is going to be very interesting for you. Today I am going to talk to you about 10 ways to perfect your landing. Well, to have a perfect landing is a dream of every pilot. This really doesn't measure your skill, but well, it really does give us a sense of good feeling when we make a good landing. And it also makes our passengers feel very comfortable when we do that. So without wasting any time, let me tell you some ways in which you can perfect your landings. The first point is fly your pattern speeds. Most manufacturers have a recommended pattern speed. If not for all, but they do have it for the approach in your finals. Make sure that you follow that and that will make sure that you come into a smooth landing. Number two, try to avoid major power changes at the end. If you have to make major power changes during a pattern, then you aren't flying a stabilized approach. Use known power settings for each leg of the pattern that you fly and make small corrections for a constant and stable descent for landing. The third one is to know where the wind is coming from. Wind correction is important for every leg of your pattern. One of the most common pattern errors is overshooting your finals, which can happen for various reasons, but the number one reason is the wind. If you have a tailwind on the base, that is a wind that comes from the back, then you will be overspeeding on your base leg. Now, the higher your ground speed, the earlier you will have to turn to roll out perfectly on your finals for landing. The fourth point is your aiming point. The aiming point should not be moving on the windscreen. This tip goes way back to your first few flights as a student pilot. The spot you're aiming for shouldn't change its position on the windscreen. If you're on a stabilized approach, your aiming spot will be glued to your windscreen for the entire time that you're making your final approach. The fifth point is, if you're having a hard time with crosswinds, try less flaps. One of the few cases in which you may not want to use full flaps is during crosswinds. By landing with less than full flaps, you land at a slightly higher airspeed, which makes your flight controls more effective and counteracting the crosswind. Sixth is to use your visual aids. So if your runway is installed with Wasi or Papi, you can use the same for your final approach. Point number seven is to watch your runway to zoom in size. This is when you should begin your flare. As you approach the runway, it expands in size steadily. Once you get approximately 10 feet above the pavement, the runway will begin to expand rapidly on your windscreen. When this happens, it is time to flare. Point number eight is to transition your eyes down to the runway during the flare. During your round out, Look for the three to four centerline stripes down the runway to get an accurate sight picture. If you focus too close in front of your aircraft during the round out, you will flare late. And if you focus too far on the runway, you will flare early. Point number nine is to fly your airplane all the way to the ground. Don't give up when you're a few feet above the runway. Maintain a positive control all the way till you touch the ground. Point number 10, in strong crosswinds, Increase your aileron deflections as you decelerate on the runway. After you touch down, you need to keep your plane from weather waning into the wind. To do that, slowly add full aileron deflection into the wind to keep your wings level. At the same time, use your rudder to keep the nose aligned with the runway. Keep following our channel Golden Applets Aviation for more such informative videos and updates. Come, let's fly!